healing takes place at the level of consciousness, Shiva, Shakti, Nara, right? Shiva, Shakti, Jiva. So the totality, awareness, the power, right? And the individual, the seeming individual. Consciousness experiencing itself from a vintage point. It remains totality, but it is restricted completely and utterly. So that levels of healing here are, you see, at the ultimate level, that's where all the healing takes place. Realignment taking place. Understanding of what is what taking place. In that realignment, no family karma has any support anymore. It crumbles down. Do you see? It no, has no length to stand. For the last 10, 8 to 10 years, I've been struggling with like a uh, blockage in my solar plexus and stomach area. And over the years, I realized that this has been going on in my family uh, for quite some time. So my mother has the same, my grandmother has the same, my sister also a little bit. And so further down the line probably as well. And in my first immersion, it was really easy for me to detach myself. So it was, it was easier for me to let go in the first immersion than today. And I, f I feel like it's because <clears throat> my grandmother, she is like, uh, she's in the process of dying at the moment. And this has been going on for like three months and I've been with her a lot. And I feel like that this restricted area, she is also suffering right now. And uh, it pains me to see that she is like um, struggling a lot because she has a lot of pain. And as soon as she drinks only water, she starts puking and but at the same time, I have the feeling that she is not able to let go. And I feel like that's kind of the message of this problem here, not being able, able to let go fully. And so my question is, um, because also over the years, I felt like, okay, if this kind of opens up, what will happen to the people around me? But because obviously, as soon as stuff changes inside, outside stuff changes as well. So now my grandmother, and maybe you can elaborate a bit on the subject of uh, ancestral karma, and also, because I have a two-year-old daughter and I feel like it's my purpose to release the family of this. And I don't want her to have the same problems. So, yeah, is it possible if I resolve it that she is also free of that? Well, my, perhaps she doesn't even have the same issue, but those are my two questions. So what's the first question? Because I, I, I get the... What, wait, mm. can you please remind me? Because I can't quite disting, distinguish one from the other. I understand ancestral karma, right? Whether this can be dealt with in this lifetime by yourself. Mm. The answer is very simple. Yes, of course. That's why you're here. That's why you're doing this work. That's why you came. That's why you... Pursuing this, it's clear. Consciousness now have had enough. So it's just, you know, it's not just this, like you are at it. That's it. It's only a matter of some logistics, time. So rest assured, you, you've done the job already. Consider it done. You see what I mean? 
like instead of like living under the weight of that that ancestral karma sounds heavy strong ancestral karma yes very often the people come into this world and they carry this ancestral karma they say late children in one's life bring the fullness of the ancestral karma into the family particularly for men so um, but you are still young I presume just don't make want to make assumptions I fell quite a couple times flat on my face and before so but you look like what in your 36 36 yeah I thought so mid 30s yeah so still considered to be young men in certain circles they consider me a young man you know so I'm just 20 over years older than you still like oh that young man that young man okay so consider this is done at your level you see you doing this you came here for that you realize that that there is something on something that reoccurring repeating itself what how it came about what's the reason of course we can spend lifetime to uncover that like search for a holy grail you know the authentic you know like let's find the children of Mary Magdalene you know like all this kind of Da Vinci code it's fun to watch as a movie but in reality it doesn't really bring anything on the plate it doesn't really deliver so the good thing is the good news is is that everything is within anyway that understanding is what brings the tremendous amount of realignment in terms of where the energy should go so all these realizations are within all these realizations if within the information field there will be need for you to know what is it related to what is it in relation to in connection to it might be accompanied by insights I know you didn't ask about it but I'm responding because many of us are in the room now so to give it like all-encompassing answer suffice you are clear here that it is here within me that the family business will be resolved that something unresolved will be resolved here and primarily it is resolved at the level of the healing of consciousness you see we will go back to the charts drawing something tomorrow to the like our not quite a board the right what, what is it like you know have a large notebook right pad so that we can speak again by continuing giving ourselves this entrance point into this what can only be experienced with the help of what serves us now as that umbrella you know, we clock this work into the teachings of Kashmir Shaiva masters right so Trika Shaivism you're familiar with that term already so we will speak about it so there, there, are, there are these three aspects right Shiva Shakti and Jiva or Shiva Shakti an individual the awareness the power of self-awareness right and individual plane so there are these three planes of existence three planes of existence we talked about it earlier but from a different point of view I didn't de draw the triangle I didn't go through that kind of representation we took a different stab at it but there are these three levels when last night for example we spoke about Ayurveda and we could have also spoken about it in a more emphatic way in terms of how Ayurveda had to adhere to the current system of value compromising the truly holistic nature of Ayurveda why because not everyone can immediately grasp the concept of that what stands here Atman is the absolute 
one's atma is, one's soul is the totality. So everyone just want to be healed. Like everyone, one, all of us just want to have our own cake and eat it too. We just want to have it neat, neat and tidy. We live in that age. So Ayurveda is a holistic system which is completely in the mosaic of all the other Vedic, the branches of Vedic wisdom, is being utilized only to a portion of that. Why? Because it treats individual. And connecting these two questions, what you spoke about, what you brought out, and my responses to you, and what you brought out now, because there is a large overlapping territory. So it might have been useful if I went more into that in my response to Nico when I spoke about how there are different degrees of what is and how it's been treated. So if we are to treat individual only, obviously the treatment is restricted there and then. But in Ayurveda, it is never restricted. To begin with, there is this, at the time perhaps, when Ayurvedic uh, knowledge began to be passed on from heart to heart in a written form, right? All this Charak Samhita, Sushrut Samhita, Vakbat Samhita, all these great sages who had this download and came up with precise sutra-like expositions. These texts are out there, they, were, they are available in English even, and maybe even in German, I don't know. You know what is your mother tongue, but just saying. So, at the time, their language is unapologetically universal because it already rests within, within the oikumen, within the riverbed, right? Within the, it's embedded in the tradition where the universality of individual is understood as being one, an expression of totality. Whether this is Samkhya philosophy, or this philosophy, of that, it doesn't matter. Samkhya may be dualistic, Advaita Vedanta is not, but they are all linked like this, interconnected. They are all parts of the darshanas, six systems. So, this, what I'm building up now, so that there's clear understanding, so healing takes place at the level of consciousness. Shiva, Shakti, Nara, right? Shiva, Shakti, Jiva. So the totality, awareness, the power, right? And the individual, the seeming individual. Consciousness experiencing itself from a vintage point. It remains totality, but it is restricted completely and utterly. So that levels of healing here are, you see, at the ultimate level, that's where all the healing takes place. Realignment taking place, understanding of what is what taking place. In that realignment, no family karma has any support anymore. It crumbles down, do you see? It no, has no leg to stand. It only has legs to stand if we view this as something passed on individually. This is where we need to make that leap. If we are, as human beings, to make that necessarily quantum leap, everyone talks about, since the term quantum came into the use, into understanding, over a hundred years ago now, we ought to make that leap a quantum one. And that leap is in the first exchanges yesterday with the lady who was sitting over here, is that us or I is the greatest pay, the greatest reason, the greatest sacrifice. Me or us, me singularly, us plurally speaking. Remember? That adjustment I felt like making from get going. This is where you begin to your work. So you work already immediately at the level of that understanding. Immediately. It's like you making your own quantum leap in your understanding. You see? I'm not asking you to bypass 
you seem to be together. I don't need to say these things. You already speak coming from the right place. Someone who brings that and speaks of the grandma and the daughter has my heart fully there. You have my trust. So I don't need to now kind of like, you know, oh, this and that. Contrary to that, I'm asking you to actually no suffering taking place on the part of your grandma. You see? Something seems suffering, but no suffering taking place. It's very, very inhumane to think that way. You see? And it's not that only when life force leaves, then there is a release. There's always a release. Always. If you go into that as in solving that riddle, you will see how the consciousness of your grandmother has never suffered. And it's all due to the enmeshment, involvement of pranic forces. And then all this idea of pain, suffering rises there. All this overlapping structure there. But in reality, you and your grandmother, and likewise your daughter, will never suffer. You do not know suffering. Nobody knows suffering. This is a quantum leap. This is regaining your Shiva hood. As you are there, fully present, till the last breath of your grandma. You see? You're balancing the extremities of the world in your awareness. Extremity. Yes. Fully there, fully there, at the level of the heart, at the level of emotive impact. Something you have to live. Something goes through, goes through refinement. You are not leapfrogging out of that. You are not taking a bypass because it's not nice to see someone close to you in pain. It's better to learn through a postcard and maybe go you know, and put a candle and kind of like it's all done neat and tidy without my involvement. So, and then there is this level of the Shakti, the level of the somatic healing to sort of there is all that what needs to be done taking place, you see? So that always there are three levels of healing. What we, do we imply? So apply, apply. Yes, someone who asks, this need to be immediately remedied, this need to be dealt with. Of course, individual level is being. But that individual level, soon as we begin to move further, soon as we begin to delve dig deeper, it's like, oh, we're coming out of the individual. Individual boundaries begin to fall, begin to expand. And in no time, suddenly a lot more is incorporated, that family, that collective. And so it goes. So this is why there are this, the so-called individual level, you know, the psychic level, or the domain of the energy, and the ultimate level, to summarize it succinctly. The ultimate level, level of awareness itself when nothing is ever out of whack. Nothing is ever needs to be healed, only returned fully, recognized what it is in full measure. So, and this is also in alignment with that, what masculine body represents here, because the Shiva hood is that. This is the anthropomorphic nature of a human being, just as woman is an embodiment of Shakti, every man is an embodiment of Shiva. Carries that verticality of awareness, that lingam, crystal clear light, column of light of consciousness. It illumines everything whilst remaining unattached. It sees everything experiences everything, it knows it all, it's the only knower.
established in that light, healing takes place. Not just in the family, greater family, nation is being healed. In one single individual, this is not exaggeration, a whole nation can be healed. If the totality of the healing takes place. So, this is the thousand monkeys and one hundred Sufi masters. This is what it means, the effect. Just like, I don't know if I need to explain it, but there is this, among the Sufis, there is a belief, there are always number of light beings in the world who keep this order in place. Hundred is just a nominal number given. Not a moment when there is not enough. Always replaced. Life falls out, there is another one who will carry that. So there are always many in training. In case it's like in this inexhaustible, in this inextinguishable army of light workers. That concept of 100 masters of light, keepers of light. And you are that keeper of light. So you recognize and that happens in you, in nowhere else. That's where the healing takes place. And then how, what, these are semantics, logistics. That's why, in a way, it's reassuring that in your question, you didn't go for like, you know, because sometimes we go into circumambulating manner about the core of the issue. We want to find out why. Who gives a why? There's no way to find out why. Because for every why, there is a myriad of domino-like whys. Which one do we train? When do we say, that's why? Or because of that why, that was kneeling and tipping over. That why. So that why is ad infinitum. So this is very, very simple and straightforward in a way. And then we look for answers. We look for solutions only. <laughs>